in your childhood did anyone ever tell you that don't do what I do, just do what I tell you to do? I don't know about you, but I heard it quite often as a child. And that's a really terrible leadership principle. So in this video, I'm actually going to be covering 10 good principles that you should consider when you're a leader. So hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Topic today is 10 leadership principles. So I recommend all of you just to hire a VA. Like if you don't have one yet, then I mean hire just as soon as possible because uh, it will immediately take your business to, to, to the next level. Because first of all, you're going to be taking it more seriously and you're actually going to treat it more like a real business instead of just a side hustle or hobby or anything like this. So, I mean, yeah, here's a couple of, couple of like basic management tactics and um, which will pretty much like boost this employee productivity but we don't really care only about productivity or uh, we don't really only care about performance we also care about creating this culture of where it's it's like this startup where like everyone is really driven and everything is pretty much like willing to do whatever it takes to for this company to succeed and um just imagine like when you start, when you have calls with your uh, people that they are really like after every, every call, like you feel really energetic and you feel excited as a business owner. So you can achieve that if you just treat your people right. And if you really build this culture where you set the expectations and when if you really manage it properly. So that's what uh, these actually principles um, are part of. So um, number one thing is absolutely like lead by example. So my father used to say, he sometimes told me like, uh, do as I say, not as I do. I was like, even as a child, I was like, come on, seriously. So <laughs> that's the terrible like parenting uh, strategy. And it's even worse like uh, business strategy. No, I mean, no way. I mean, uh, that. That's awful. So we have to lead by example. And too often, like as a human, uh, like behavior characteristic is that we, we touch other people by uh, their like uh, accents. And then we are touch ourselves by the intent. Um, so meaning that we just give more slack to ourselves. Now, like, ah, uh, it's, it's not too bad that I didn't get it done, but at least I was thinking about it. At least I like started doing it, but it's it's okay. It's not complete. Whereas like for others, we are like, okay, like why didn't you do it? Why it's not complete? So the bottom line is that every behavior that we expect from other people in our team, like we really must um, demonstrate that behavior ourselves. So we pretty much have to be the poster child for, for this behavior, for our company culture. So the way to make it the way the way to make other people like your team to take seriously the company culture is to live and breathe it yourself because it's actually in one way the business company culture should be a reflection of ourselves in such a way that we build those like ideal uh, behaviors that we want to uh, like build and of course unlike everyone just mistakes and when mistakes happen, we just own up to it and we don't like try to cover it up. For example, if we value like being on time and doing stuff and if, if all the time we are late from meetings and everything, then I mean, we must really own up to it instead of actually uh, trying to like uh, say that, ah, it's not a big deal. I mean, and I'm the owner of the company, so I can behave the way I want. So we, we are actually going to get much better results if we uh, have the decency in uh, demonstrating the behaviors that we exp expect from other people. And yeah, I mean, there are studies that, I mean, uneth unethical behavior at the management level just leads to this, that ethical employees, I mean, are going to leave the company and we are, we are just left with those who are 
unethical as well, meaning cutting corners, stealing and defrauding their customers. And number two is like this leveraging this um, crisis. Like so often, like things can really stagnate and we can end up this in this culture that, yeah, I mean, there's no urgency. So we come up with an idea and OK, let's hold on, hold on, we need to plan and it's going to take us like quite a few, like let, let's just do a really good planning and and we need to do research, like let, come on, let's do research, that's just going to take a few weeks at least and, and then it leads to a scenario that okay, I mean, three months have gone but where there's very little to solve for, so I mean, it's an idea but nothing really happened because I mean, there's really no sense of urgency. So we really want to apply this kind of uh, mindset that, okay, I mean, let's just get it, let's get things done and let's do things quickly. And I mean, teach employees how to plan projects. And I see this so often with my teams that, that, that okay, if I, if I let them, then they will take enormous amount of time to plan even pretty simple projects. So I actively actually have to fight this behavior. Uh, what it means that I have to like uh, encourage this behavior of like taking immediate action and pretty much talk, like, okay, you have an idea then, I mean, just launch it today and improve later. It's like, I want to see the first version already like tomorrow, okay? And instead of like, typically everyone is going to, um, Try to make it so that okay, I'm I'm gonna spend a few weeks or at least one week of uh, really like crafting this and figuring out and researching this. But my mindset is always that no way, I forget it. I mean, just show me something already tomorrow that we have at least something to work with. Then we can keep on improving it, and then we can at least know that we are speaking of the same thing and we are heading to the same direction, right? And then I mean tracking. I mean. We give a system that has pretty much all this in place already, like weekly planning, daily huddle, quarterly goals, and then I mean that's the objectives, key results. But I mean we this information also needs to be easily accessible. But yeah, I mean I would say like this is one of the most important skills we can actually give to people, like teach people how to plan teach how, people how to be productive and so on. And we also like need to have easy way how to uh, track things. So we don't have these complicated tools how to, I mean, it's fine that we use tools, but it has to be really simple to understand. And when we get a new team member, it cannot take like six months or even one month for that person to really like figure that tool out. I actually remember when we were using this one tool um, from um, from scaling up, and uh, I mean, it was it actually wasn't very uh, intuitive tool. I mean, the user experience what wasn't that much, but anyway, I mean, we we got it done. We implemented the tool, and I remember like when, when, once a new person joined in as a like manager of operations, like. Even for him, it took like one month to really figure it out, one or two months. So and that's that's way too long and that's just way too complicated. And then, I, I mean, brainstorming with my team, I mean, I make sure that like every single team has weekly brainstorming sessions because that teaches them how to be creative and really teaches, gives them this framework that okay, what can I do to introduce different ideas and so on? So this is actually a essential thing to do. I mean, uh, have these brainstorming sessions uh, with your team. And even if you have one v VA or you are just working with one person, then still, I mean, start doing these weekly brainstorming sessions because it will also instill this behavior that, uh, okay, I, I cannot just rely on you or the business owner for answers. I actually have to develop those answers myself as well. Then, I mean, autonomy mastery purpose. That's uh, what the book, that's a book by Daniel Pink, where he's basically 
in his book Drive, he tells that these are pretty much the three things that uh, sets up the employee motivation. And I pretty much agree with those three things. So, I mean, we want to have this autonomy so people can actually impact their job and mastery. They have to be able to all the time get better and better and purpose. I mean, there has to be some kind of purpose on on the role that that they do. And speaking of like expectations, like if everyone is already doing those, um, this weekly planning, OKR stuff like that, I mean, then the expectations are pretty clear already. But when we have like role specific thing, like when we are hiring someone, we have these different scorecards where we say that, okay, what is this role supposed to do? So what are you basically responsible for? And I mean, it's good to use uh, in different projects. I mean, basically, if you're not doing anything complicated, then uh, the less systems and processes you're going to be needing. But when you get more people, when you get more com- complex projects, uh, which includes a lot of people, then things are going to get more more complicated. So then it's diff- important to use different models like Rossi model, which just defines all the responsible uh, res- responsibilities of everyone who's involved in, in the project. Um, pre- key, sixth thing here is to, I mean, kind of see from this process to principles based management. And um, well, I mean, pretty much go say so that, okay, I mean, if you just have educated people, I mean, there would be no need for processes, right? <laughs> Because we, we would just have one process that just do it right. And if the output is wrong, then, <laughs> then, you, then you messed up the process, right? <laughs> but I mean, that's not really rea- realistic that we could have these expe- expectations that we would have zero processes. But still, so we need to have processes, but it's actually more makes sense to move on to these uh, principles. And uh, if you think about like different companies, for example, like McDonald's, like they are so heavily oriented on processes. And why is that? Does anyone know the reason? I mean, the reason is that they are so focused on processes because they have to be able to pretty much hire anyone. So the processes are so streamlined, so they don't actually need to invest that much in training people because they most mostly they are like students, like young people with zero work experience. Like McDonald's, you like hires often people who have never had any kind of uh, job before, and they are they haven't usually even finished school. So if that's the case, if that if, if that's our team, then it means that okay, we don't really have educated people um, who would be able to handle any kind of situation so that means that okay we are gonna need we pretty, we need to go heavy on processes but then if you think about com- company like netflix well who's not doing <laughs> that get great right now but still i mean they're more like heavily oriented on getting just these right people and just getting uh, like focused on principles instead of uh, these uh, processes, which means that, I mean, they have even have this book book of like no rules rules, which means that you are just expected to pay, behave in such a way that you always do what's best in the company's interest. Seven, then, I mean, easy access to information and grading. So what does this mean? It means different kind of dashboards so you can easily track the information that you need. So, I mean, on Amazon Business, we have used so many different uh, uh, tools for this. So we have also used uh, spreadsheets. And luckily, nowadays, there's just so many, much uh, more availability of different tools to use. For example, tracking sales, tracking uh, revenue, tracking profit, tracking inventory, and all that stuff. So that's much, much, much more easier than it was just a few years ago. But it also, it depends on the role. So we could just have different kind of spreadsheet. But the point is that we track the information that we need and we just make it easily accessible. And I mean, team documents, 
that goes without saying, right? And then just sharing this information across teams. Because what I've noticed that it's so easy, but like when different teams work on different stuff, so it's so easy to get siloed. So we basically consciously, consciously need to break down these silos and make people like uh, work across different teams uh, and so on and share information. And then, I mean, personal productivity, I mean, it's just about how to be organized and doing different things like uh, getting things done and uh, eat that frog, which pretty much means that you, you start with the most dif difficult thing in the firm, in the morning, like first, first of the day, because the most difficult thing or the most important thing with Sarah makes sense. And I mean, responsibility process is one of those key things that what we kind of like expect from everyone so this this is really like foundation uh, for the uh, like the principles uh, like how, how people are expected to behave so that's actually one of our key uh, one of our core core values and i recommend you to do it as well so Use this video by uh, Christopher Avery and really make sure that your every single member in your team and your business partner and um, maybe even your uh, if you're doing any joint ventures or any, any kind of partnerships like that, they understand this as well. Because if you do this, if people can really understand this, I mean, they, it will be so much easier to deal with any kind of issues and mistakes and, and so on. And yeah, I mean, number 10 is really measure what matters. So, I mean, OKRs are goals, but those need to be coupled with KPI. So key, per key performance indicators and a different role has different different indicators. So it's, it's, it's a huge difference whether I'm just um, working on, on the ads versus someone who's just working on graphics versus if I'm just doing mainly on copywriting or if I'm just doing a funnel. So that's why every role has to be, ha, has to have each set of different uh, KPIs. If you like this topic, then hit a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And we also have a closed group where we discuss these different topics. So if you would like to be added to this group, then just comment group and we will reach out to you and add you there. See you at the group.